All right, so welcome to tonight's webinar. It is uh, April 3rd, 2018. Have some really good information for you guys. Excited to get talking about this. Uh, we're going to be talking about some dip buys, some technical patterns and reads. Um, mainly what I saw today, we had a huge dip buy trade today. And I want to talk about that. It was fantastic. I want to talk about why I saw it. Dip buying, is, it's like an art form I, I often compare it to. And uh, so I want to address that a little bit. I also want to talk about IPOs. Today, Spotify IPO, and I want to talk a little bit more about what I'm looking for when I'm trading IPOs. I went on the voice channel and traded, you know, live with you guys. I actually didn't end up making a trade on Spotify. I didn't present anything, but I talked through kind of what I'm looking for. But I want to, um, you know, touch up on that again here. And um, um, there was one other thing I want to talk about. I can't remember. Uh, but it's here in my uh, slideshow. So uh, let's get started here. The first thing I want to talk about, I want to get you guys hyped about Vegas real quick. I just want to spend a quick second on Vegas. We do have our Vegas retreat coming up here and um, I'm so excited about it. It's going to be an awesome experience. It's going to be an incredible learning experience. Um, really excited about meeting a lot of you in person. Hopefully you can come. Um, just real quick, talk about some of the details here. Uh, it is going to be August 1st through August 4th of this year, 2018, or yeah, of this year, 2018. Uh, this is going to include two days of us trading together. Okay, all of us are going to be together. It's going to be fantastic. The KF family in person. I'm really very excited about it. Um, there's going to be trainings. We're going to have speakers. Um, who the guest speakers are is a little bit TBD, but I have some things in the works uh, to make it you know worth your guys' time being there. Uh, we're going to be staying at an incredible hotel. It's a five-star hotel, the Mandarin Oriental, right on the Las Vegas Strip. It's going to be a blast. I'm going to provide you guys with two gourmet meals a day. They're going to come service meals while we're trading, both in the morning and afternoon. It's going to be awesome. And I'm also going to have some opportunities for you guys to win some cash, you know, a little gambling money to go head down to the blackjack tables and whatnot. Um, it's going to be an awesome experience. Again, hope you can join us. Um, I want to, If you are a lifetime member, um, this is the price if you're not a lifetime member right here. Uh, this is the just regular price, this $15.50 price here. If you are a lifetime member, it comes all the way down to about $1,200. Now, I'm not doing this to make money. This is not a this is not a revenue thing, honestly. Uh, if I I mean, these prices, I'm, I'm really not making any money. So I'm basically just breaking even on this. I just really want to provide a good experience for all traders. Um, so it's going to be a blast. If you guys have any questions, feel free to DM me. We would love to have you come. Um, if uh, you know If you have any questions, please DM me. Um, would be awesome. You are, you know, if you want to bring your spouse as well, they're welcome to come with no extra cost. If they do want to attend the trainings and things though, they're and, and be fed and whatnot, there will be some costs just to cover, you know, the meals and stuff like that. But yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, here's a little bit of a rundown um, of our schedule and things that we're planning to do. Uh, people will be getting in August 1st and we're going to kind of have a little bit of a party. Not, not too crazy. We'll be an open bar, but uh, we will be getting up early to trade the next morning. So don't get too crazy. Um, but uh, I want you guys to have a good time. I will provide some drinks for you guys and things like that. If you know, if you're interested, and I'm going to be giving away some cash, as I mentioned, I'm going to be going over how we prepare for the next day in trading. And of course, I'm going to be up very early. You see here, 5:30 a.m. If you want to sleep in a little bit more and you're not down to get up at 5:30 a.m. to you know pre-market prep with me, I understand. Uh, but the market opens at 6:30 a.m. Las Vegas time. Yes, that is early. Um, I know it is, but it will make it well worth your time. It's be an incredible educational experience and awesome experience for us all to meet together and trade together live. Uh, then again, as I mentioned, we'll have breakfast served you. We're going to do trainings. We're going to give you guys a break. There's an incredible um, you know, pool there as well as a luxury spa. I'm going to be giving away some spa uh, passes and massages and things as part of this trip. So hopefully you can win one and uh, go ahead and enjoy that. Um, I, I also want this schedule to be flexible. Okay, I'm willing to do what you guys want. If you guys want more trainings, I'm happy to provide more trainings. I'll have over 20 hours prepared of instruction, you know, worth of in 20 hours worth of instruction to give you guys. But if you guys want a little more free time to hang out in Vegas, no worries at all. You know, we can change the schedule, give you guys a little more free time. If some of you, hey, I, I want a little more one-on-one -on -one instruction, I'd be happy to stay back with you, um, you know, and uh, work with you on some things. Since you have questions about it. it's gonna be a very personal experience, one-on-one -on -one experience for everyone. We'll come back and trade power hour here um, together. Then I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a break. After that, we will have lunch served to us right at market close. Um, and then five to seven, I want to get together again, do some mental preparation things for the, the day ahead. And you guys will have plenty of time to enjoy Vegas. Like I said, it's a very flexible schedule. You know, this is for you. This this whole training is for you to guys enjoy yourselves, have a good time and, uh, you know, hopefully gain some uh, really important uh educational experience as well. So this is a little rundown of the schedule. Here's some pictures of the uh, the hotel here. It's an incredible hotel. Um, each of you will be provided with a 
a king, you know, a king suite here. You can have a king bed. So again, if you want to bring a spouse, or if you want to bring a friend or something, we can. I'm sure we can arrange getting, uh, you know, two beds instead of a king suite or whatever. It's going to be an awesome experience. So, anyways, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, space is going to be limited, so please let me know if you are interested in coming, so I can kind of lock you in there. Um, it's going to be awesome. All right, so let's get started on uh, the other stuff here, on um, some, some of this more educational stuff. I want to talk about this dip by pattern. Okay, this was an incredible trade. Let me just show you real quick this trade. Okay, we bought uh, CLLS here at 33.25. Okay, this is not a joke. You're looking at this and you're probably like, "That's there's no way you bought it, you know, 50 cents above the low of day. But it's true. I alerted this in the chat room, entered at 33.25. I actually entered, um, you know, I think if I'm not mistaken, I entered here on this red candle before it actually dipped before making a, you know, continuing later on. Uh, but I want to talk about why did I buy at 33.25, okay? And there's some really important things to consider, all right? The first thing to consider is the catalyst, okay? What was moving CLLS this morning? Well, this was a cancer-related play, okay? Now, there's, haven't, there hasn't been very many hasn't been very many types of news releases and things that have, have had a major impact as far as dip by patterns go. And it's constantly changing, okay? You know, one week... It'll be any stock that announces FDA approval is just totally textbook for a dip buy. But then the next week, you know, stocks that release FDA approval don't retrace at all and dip buys are terrible. And then a month later, all of a sudden, um, you know, it's any stock that um, that has positive earnings are really strong off of off of dip buys. So knowing what the catalyst, knowing what is moving the stock is extremely important. As I mentioned, CLLS was a, a cancer-related drug. They, they released some positive data about, um, I think it was a phase two or phase three with one of their cancer drugs. And uh, that, you know, cancer-related drugs were holding well. Now, additionally, there was another stock in addition to CLLS, BPTH, which was also um, released some cancer-related positive data and things. So it just this morning, these cancer Type stocks had a lot of uh, had a lot of attention on them. Okay, so number one here and number four they kind of go together. I mentioned catalyst and then I mentioned market conditions. These two actually go together because you need to understand which catalysts are really are providing really good setup for dip buys. Okay, right now it's earnings winners. Earnings winners have been incredible off of dip buys. I love buying dip buying earnings winners. And to be honest, that's been the case for the past four or five months. Earnings winners have been really good for dip buys. Um, that FDA approval has not been good, not been good really at all, honestly. And it's surprising. You would think that, uh, you know, a stock releases FDA approval that it would really hold and retrace, make big moves. But, you know, with some, ex with some, um, exceptions for the most part, FDA approval winners have not been real strong. Um, so let's see, we get a, get a comment here from the chat room, Channing, he's mentioning during earnings season, dip buys on earnings winners are killers. Yes, they are incredible. Absolutely love them. That's my favorite setup. Dip buying earnings winners is probably one of my favorite uh, setups ever. Okay, I love dip buying these positive earnings winners. Of course, you need to know and make sure you are buying an actual earnings winners instead of buying a stock that people thought was positive earnings ended up being bad. Those won't retrace. Okay, you kind of have to get a feel to actually be able to read the earnings. Um, and you know, we can talk about that later. What types of things to actually look for in earnings. But anyways, uh, so next pre-market volume is extremely important to note. Okay, let's go ahead and look at this chart here. Did I? Oh, I cut out the volume. That was silly of me. I should have included the volume here in the bottom of the chart. But watching the volume in pre-market, you'll see this light gray area is pre-market action. Okay, so this closed, um, you know, at thirty dollars and fifty cents area. But look as they announced the positive data. Look at this major move here that we saw and uh, had a really good volume. Again, you can't see it very well. Uh, I apologize for that. I meant to keep that in there. Uh, but this had lots of eyes on it. Okay, this made a really nice move from thirty dollars up to about the thirty-four fifty area. Okay, great, great action. Okay, so that's another thing you want to watch for. You really want to watch for, um, you know, making sure these stocks are getting very good pre-market volume. Because if if there's no one watching these in pre-market, then there's not going to be enough eyes on them to build support for a dip buy. Next thing you want to know is pre-market resistance and support. Okay, now this isn't a great example um, because this was this this one isn't very clear. There's other examples that um, you know I could provide and explain why I bought here because a lot of times in pre-market here you'll get support at levels and that's where you want to buy on these dip buys. Let me let me kind of illustrate here. So imagine this red line is kind of a pretend stock here. Um, ideally, you know you would have seen. The, this creates some support here like this before, you know, closing up. If this, this is a terrible drawing and I apologize, 
But you know, if you were to see this really clear level of support here created in pre-market, um, this is a good dip buy area. Now, a lot of times you'll get multiple. Yes, you know, this is very clear and it doesn't always work out this way. It totally changes from stock to stock, but just trying to help paint a picture that you want to note pre-market levels of support and resistance because that can help give you idea of where you want to enter in. Okay. So now if you're asking why did I enter here at the 3325 area? Well, let me erase that real quick. Okay, there you go. Got my terrible drawing off the screen. Much of this was just a pullback. Okay. This was, I liked getting in this at a mid range. Again, this closed at 3050 and pre-market highs were about the 3450 area. Okay. This $33.25 entry here was just very mid range, very mid range from the close and, and very mid range from the highs right here. Okay. So that was my main reason for entering here on 33.25. Additionally, there's another huge reason why I entered here when I did. Let me show you right here. Let's go back. Oh, got to erase my drawings. My apologies. Okay. You see this right here? Time of day. I don't know if that makes it more clear, more obvious. I don't know, guys, I'm, I'm still playing around with this whole setup, but time of day is so crucial, okay? Now, I have a video on YouTube, and it is called the 30-minute reversal pattern, okay? that And what that means, I encourage you to go watch that video if you don't know what I mean by that. What that means is stocks tend to reverse better 30 minutes into market open um, than um, th stocks are most likely to reverse 30 minutes into market open. Sorry, I was kind of sloppy explaining that. Um, and so this is a perfect example of that. This time right here, again, I'm sorry, I cut off the time of day. But this is 30 minutes into market open. To be exact, this line right here, I believe, represents 30 minutes into market open. Okay. And so this is a perfect example of the 30-minute reversal pattern. What that pattern states is that the first 30 minutes, you know, this is obviously creating a downtrend the first 30 minutes, but 30 minutes into market open, you are going to see a reversal. Okay, it's amazing. It seriously is amazing at how frequently this works. You might think that's that's goofy. That doesn't make sense. What's that? What is that about? Why would a stock reverse 30 minutes? I don't have an exact answer for you. I really don't. Um, I, I, you know, I wish I had some super impressive scientific or mathematic formula of why stocks tend to reverse 30 minutes into the market. I don't know why, okay, but you'll be amazed at how often stocks do reverse off that 30, 30 minute level. So this stock was very much a entry based off of that potential 30 minute reversal right there, and it worked out incredibly. Now, I actually ended up trading this kind of like a wuss. I think I took profits like right here. I initially said that my price target was $36. No joke, I said that. Okay, I really did say that $36 is my price target. And look, I ended up being such a wuss and I backed out, I got out way early. OK, now the reason I got out early, um, you see, if, if you see here, you know, it had it slowed down a little bit here and, and I felt that there was some potential resistance here at this area. So I ended up playing it safe and getting out. Also, overall markets were a little bit goofy. Overall markets have been goofy. So I traded this like a wuss. OK, I should have been much more aggressive with this, but I'm really happy about my initial plan that the thirty three twenty five entry with the thirty six dollar profit taking entry. Yeah, I mean, that's an awesome trade. Now, this continued and did way more than I expected to. It continued to hit almost $39 from this 33.25 entry. Okay, and that's incredible. Fantastic strength there. Absolutely love it. it. was an awesome trade for us. Again, I personally should have been more aggressive. I didn't trade it. I didn't even stick to my own trade plan as well as I should have. But hopefully this um, shed some light on what to look for. Um, this was such a key uh, component. This, this 10 a.m. Eastern time which is 30 minutes in the market open, is typically the ideal entry time for uh, these dip by patterns because of the 30 minute reversal. I'm not, I'll just go 30 minute. I'm not gonna waste your guys time, but that's why, okay? Again, please go watch my YouTube video. Um, it's on my channel, 30 minute reversal pattern. Now I'll explain why that's that's so important there, okay? All right, so there's, I talked about the textbook dip by pattern there. Hopefully this shed some light on why I traded CLLS like this this morning. What a beauty, really excited about this, it was fantastic. Awesome, awesome trade. Okay, um, next, oh yeah, this is the other thing I wanna talk about. Do not miss, do not confuse this. This is the 30 second, okay? Before I talk about the 30 minute reversal, this is a 30 second, I guess there's lots of 30s in stock trading. There's a 30 minute reversal and the 30 second market open fake out, okay? This isn't really a name, I just, it's not like this is the standard textbook name. Okay, you can call it whatever you want, but this explains um, what it is. So, with this 30 second market open fake out, um, I actually had an opportunity. I actually got caught in this today. Okay, this is a rule that I follow to not buy a stock within the first 30 seconds of market open. 
Let me repeat that, not for your guys' sake, but for my sake. Do not buy a stock within the first 30 seconds of market open, okay? I have my own rules and sometimes I break them and I almost always regret it because I bought a stock from the first 30 seconds of market open and what was it? It was a fake out breakout. If you guys are getting annoying at my drawings, just let me know, I'll stop drawing. Um, but the reason why you don't, why I don't like to buy a stock from the first 30 seconds of market open is due right here, due to the extreme volume the volatility will often lead to fake outs. Let me give you an example of this. If you were with me on the voice channel this morning, you already know I got burned in this. This trade lasted about three and a half seconds in total. OK, and that was this stock right here. This is BPTH right here. Again, the gray is pre-market. OK, this right here is where we get the move into market open. These candles. OK, these are all one minute candles. Every candle you see here represents one minute at a time. OK, so you'll see. The first candle of the day was a, this is just one minute, okay? I This stock broke over $3 about 10 seconds in the market open. What did I do? I had a stop lot, I had a stop buy in right here at 301. Now this is a great spot to buy the stock. Look at this pre-market, okay? We talked about pre-market, um, you know, levels of support and resistance. This is, look how many times $3, um, you know, really basically told us, hey, you need to buy me over $3. I mean, this is as textbook as it gets. Look how many times it got denied here as a resistance. Here it bounced off, it was support. Here it was kind of sticky, both as support and resistance. I mean, this was textbook, okay? Over $3 was textbook for a buy over $3, but I broke my rule. I broke my rule. I bought within the first 30 seconds of market open, okay? Had I have waited for 30 seconds to pass, I would not have been caught in this this candle right here, which totally faked me out. I, you know, I got filled at I think the 303 area. My stop loss was 289. Literally seconds later, I kid you not, three seconds later, this crash, I got out at 289. Now I traded it safe. I had a stop loss in. I'm very glad I did because as you know, this came all the way down here to 260. It was very ugly. So I'm glad I had my stop loss in. But again, do not buy within 30 seconds of market open. This just is, it was a trade that never should have happened for me. Okay. Now, ideally, what would happen? Is that you know this stock would get denied at three dollars again here. This is this is in a in a textbook world would get denied and then come back. I'm totally fine with this coming back, but then as it continues to retrace over three, I absolutely would just love buying the stock over three dollars if it were to retrace over three and if it did not have this fake out. Okay, so just know that in the first thirty seconds of market open, yes, this was a textbook buy over three dollars, but because of the first thirty seconds, the extreme volatility. Again, I'm mad I didn't show you the volume on this chart. I don't know what I was thinking. I meant to. Volume was insane. You know, it was like 900,000 shares or something traded in this first minute. And then uh, it's just crazy. Okay. The first market open is always crazy. So you want to avoid trading the first 30 seconds. Sometimes I'll even avoid uh, trading the entire first minute of market open. Okay. So this was the other thing I want to talk about the 30 second market open fake out. Do not buy a stock from the first 30 seconds market. I got burned on this today. Um, it's my own rule and I didn't follow it. So please learn from my mistakes. Um, all right. So next up, I want to talk about trading IPOs. There's not a ton to talk about this because Spotify was kind of such a dud IPO sold off pretty bad. But I have this I have this theory. OK, this is just my own theory. I need to get a, you know, KAF trademark on it here. You know, patent pending or trademark, whatever. I don't know how I don't know what it is, but I just this is just my own thing that I kind of developed with IPOs and it's worked out really well for me. How this works is you want to wait three minutes for the IPO to go without making a new high or low before you even think about trading it. OK, now, what do I mean by that? Let's take a look at this chart here. This is Spotify's chart here. OK, each one of these candles is one minute. This was the first minute of Spotify going live. OK, this was the exact minute it went live. Again, each one of these candles represents one minute. As you'll see right here, one day, one minute chart. OK, so. Using my my strategy called the three minute rule, there really are lots of threes in, 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 in stock trading. There's the 30 minute reversal, the 30 second fake out breakout rule, and now there's a three minute rule. Okay, there's all sorts of threes, I suppose. Never really realized that to know. Um, but according to this, you want to wait three minutes for uh, into open. So I wouldn't even consider trading this stock until likely right until you know the earliest I would possibly trade an IPO would be four minutes into market open. And that is that would only be the only way I would trade an IPO that early is if this first candle made a high and a low 
And then the next three candles all traded within that high and low. At that point, I would then be willing to trade it. But as you see in this case, traded in a pretty tight range here. So the first candle was submitted here. The second candle created new highs. It did not create new lows. Okay, it created new highs though. The next candle cr created both new highs and new lows. So every time a candle makes new highs or new lows, then my three minute timer resets, okay? So here, new highs, new lows, my three, my three minute timer resets. We now move into this candle. This time it did not make new highs or new lows, okay? So there's one minute. This, this is one minute, okay? I now need two more candles to go without making a new high or new low before I consider trading it, okay? So this is a check mark saying it's approved, okay? <laughs> it counts. Now we look at our next candle, what do we have? We have a new low. This was the previous low, it broke under that, okay? So now put a big X on it, I gotta wait three more fresh minutes without a new high or new low being made, okay? So we bounce to the next candle. Well, this one didn't make a new low, it tied the low, but it didn't make a new low, okay? And it, and it didn't make a new high, remember the high is all the way back here. This is the high, well, let me show here, this is the high, and uh, this is the low here. So this candle works, okay, great, there's one. And then we get our next candle. Oh, this candle didn't make new highs, new lows either. And when I say new highs or new lows, I mean from the day, the entire day. This is the high I'm referring to, and this is the low I'm referring to. Okay, so there's two. Now three, again, this one works as well. Okay, so for the first time, we have three candles that didn't make a new high or new low. At this point, I would consider trading this, okay? Now, I didn't trade this because it didn't provide anything. I mean, it looked, this thing just looked dead and weak, and there was tons of red in the level two, so I didn't end up trading it. But after these three candles is when I would then consider trading this saying, okay, I'm prepared to take this over a high of day of 169. Um, now, again, it didn't prepare or set anything, uh, but I still wanna illustrate that strategy of waiting three minutes for highs, for no highs or new lows to be made, okay? And then at that point, you can finally say, all right, we have some support here and we have some very clear resistance here. Okay. Now this is so quick, right? There's no chart. This is, I'm not saying that this is real support and real resistance. Okay. It's not, I mean, the stock's been live for five minutes, right? But in terms of trading an IPO within the first five to 10 minutes, this is my best strategy to do it. And honestly, I can't actually remember the last time I actually had a losing trade on an IPO. I didn't trade Spotify today, but Dropbox last week or two weeks ago had two awesome winning trades on it. Um, a PAGS a couple months ago was awesome. I love trading IPOs, it's my favorite thing. Unfortunately, this didn't present a good setup. This is what we call rolling over. You see this here? I'll mention sometimes a stock's rolling over. That is what you call rolling over. It's like a little hill. Oh, whoa, okay, sorry about that. <laughs> it's like a little hill um, rolling over. Guys, I don't know what's happening here. There we go, sorry about that. Uh, this is like a little hill rolling over. This is bad, this is very bearish. This means this is this is a sign for the stock to go down. Okay, so we call this a rolling over pattern. So I was not interested because it rolled over like this. I was not interested in buying at support here. I did not like this support buy area because of the rollover. There. So, anyways, I didn't actually trade uh, Spotify here, but hopefully this is helpful. So let me just review um, real quick what we talked about today. Trading IPO is a three minute rule. Next up, we talked about the 30 second market open fake out, which I got caught in this morning. Please learn from my mistake. And before that, the textbook dip buy pattern. Um, I am recording this so you can come back and take a look at, you know, these notes and things to look at as well. So uh, that ends up my educational part here. Um, I'm going to end and stop the recording. I'm going to take your guys' questions here in a second. Uh, here's my website, kfinvesting.com. If you guys don't follow me on Twitter yet, go ahead and give me a follow if you're interested. Um, all right. So I'm going to stop the recording now and then we'll move into our question and answer session here.